Hello YouTube, and particularly YouTube Gardeners. I am here today to review the 5th Annual Central Indiana Seed Swap. That was January 28th, just a couple days ago. Put on by the Master Gardeners of Hamilton County, located in the Hamilton County Fairgrounds in Noblesville, Indiana. Uh, it was free to get in free to get in and when you get there you sign in and they gave you a ticket which you take to the free seed table and get a free packet of seeds everybody that came got a free seeds if you, if you wanted them we were there were not we left right at the end of the show and there were still seeds left so everybody that came got one if they wanted them and I chose Kentucky blue green beans these are, the label says, from the Farmer's Seed and Nursery Company in Greendale, Indiana, at P.O. Box 4178. It doesn't tell you a lot about the beans. You know, it's got some planting instructions, but it doesn't tell you about the bean. So I uh, tried to find them on the Google. And I would, you know, since it's a free one, I'd put their address in the thingy, Bob. But, but I couldn't find them. However, I found that the Gurney's Company is also in Greendale, Indiana, also at P.O. Box 4178. So clearly, these are some kind of subsidiary. Now, Gurney's has a two-ounce pack of this same bean for $5. This is only three-quarter ounce, so that makes it about two bucks. I should have, should have done the math on that, but... I'm not going to do it now. After you, uh, after you get your free one, they also gave you a card, a survey card, to fill out about the show and give your opinions. And, and then it, you turn that back in and get another free packet. But uh, I didn't need anything else, so I handed it off to my mother and let her get a free packet. And I think she got some kind of mixed tomato packet. I, I won't, I'm not sure. Anyway, from the free table, we cruised on to the next table that was Sustainable Mountain Agriculture Center from Berea, Kentucky, where I got these Milliard Oakley peas. Now the, uh, the lady, there was, there was a lady and a man manning that booth. And the, the, the man was talking to party girls, so I can't blame him for ignoring me. I was stuck talking to the lady, and she didn't know much. She was run the website or something. She said she's not. She said she was not the farmer, so she couldn't tell me much about these. But they look like southern pea, Crowder pea, field pea kind of a thing, like a black eyed pea. I also got these Wren's Egg Fall Beans Tough Haul. They also had a Tender Haul variety. And when I asked about the difference, she said the others have a Tender Haul. And these have a Tough Haul. So there you go. Anyway, these and the Tender Haul ones were both a big old fat bean. They're probably the fattest bean in my whole seed collection. And uh, these have a nice, nice pinto-y, splotchy pattern, very dark splotches, whereas the, uh, the tender halls had, had a reddish pattern, like, like a, uh, like a cranberry bean, kind of a reddish pattern to them. And both of those cost me $7 a piece, which seems like a lot, but I bought them anyway. And then there was a table of free stuff where I got these rattlesnake pole beans. And they look like a, they have a very pinto splotchy pattern as well, but they're very dark, very dark splotchy pattern. And uh, I also got a packet of Kentucky brown greasy beans. Now, and, and these came from the same person as these rattlesnake beans. It's, it's clear from the handwriting on the tags in each bag that it's the same person, though I do not know who. Anyway, Kentucky Brown Greasy Bean 
And if you watched my Goshen video last week, there was uh, a greasy bean I got there. But it's a larger bean, and it's lighter in color, and I'm hoping there will be a little bit of a flavor difference on it. But we'll see. We'll see. There's a little bit more of these in the pack than I got of the Goshen beans, but... But anyway, those were free. And also, I got these field peas. Now these are just a very monotone. They're kind of a medium brown. They don't have any splotches or spots or anything. They're just very, very monotonous in color, very uniform. They might be some kind of an actual agricultural farm pea, but, but I don't know. There was no variety listed. It was just a big Ziploc bag that said field pea on it in marker. But I managed to get some. Now, uh, when we got there, the plan was follow around the perimeter and then go to the tables in the middle. After the, fee after the free table here, There were a couple of flower things that, I, again, I was not interested in. And then a number of merchandise things. Like there was a fellow that had drawings of birds and foxes and varmints. And uh, I wasn't interested in that. There were a couple of people selling things like, uh, like seed trays and whatnot that, again, didn't interest me. Gosh, it's, I'm just lousy with seed trays around here. Then we came to a fellow in the in the next corner. The, the art guy was in one corner. Then the next corner we came to was a guy with microgreens. Now, one of the speakers was a microgreens fella. This beardy guy. But this guy didn't have a beard, so I think it was a different guy. Um... He had four trays of microgreens. He had beets. I want to say turnip, but maybe it's radish for the second tray. Purple amaranth and dun peas. They're a field pea. Commit. Maybe like these. But uh, but I tried the field peas about yay big. Dun, I tried the dun peas, about yay big, and it was very tasty. You know, you think about eating the pea or the in the pod, but you sure don't think about eating, you know, the stem and the leaves and the whole dang plant, but it's it was quite tasty. It was quite tasty. That microgreens is a very interesting thing. I, I'm not going to go into it because it's not really my thing, but... Uh, it's a way you can get fresh stuff at home in the winter. You know, when your local market may not carry things. When it, Definitely when you can't go out and grow something of yourself in the yard. It, it's a way to get some fresh stuff. And, gosh, there's a million videos about microgreens here on YouTube. You can, you know, you can find anything you want to know about them. But, uh, but he didn't, even though he had a couple of fruit jars around with seeds in them, I, I didn't hit him up to buy any or mooch any off of him or anything like that. I just, I just ate his peas and beat it. Uh, and then there was some more merchandise stuff. And eventually I came back to the, I came to the third corner of the building where I got a piece of pie from the Generation Pie Company. And now I know that's not a seed, but it was quite tasty. I believe it was Dutch apple, some kind of apple. And uh, let's see, uh, from there, I found my way to Tomato Jim again. And just like last week at the Goshen Show, I bought the black pineapple tomato. But this time, I didn't lose it. And I never did 
Never did find my packet from last week. I still, I'm at a total loss to as to what happened to him. But I don't care anymore. I bought some. And it was the last one he had, too. And since he does two for five dollars, I got regular pineapple tomato. And uh, I've bought these tomatoes from a lady at the local local farmers market and saved tried to save some seeds out of it but they didn't do very well for me maybe I, I I don't know I don't know but they didn't do very well these I'm sure will do much better and uh, oh and uh, last week when I talked about tomato Jim I didn't have any contact information I didn't have a website or anything but uh, I've talked to him since and he doesn't do a website. However, he said, get on Facebook. I put a link in the thingy, Bob. If you get on Facebook and send him a message, he'll hook you up with any of the tomatoes he's got to sell. And he had quite a few of them. So there's my plug for Tomato Jim. Now, when I, when I told my friends on Facebook that I was going to this show, my aunt reached out to me and told me, Score her a Calabrian chili pepper. And, uh, of course, I Googled it, and I was... I had a hard time finding anybody that had any for sale. There was a lot of places that listed it, but when you went there, sold out. So, I was, I was kind of surprised to find them. But, there they were, from the Small House Farm. And I've dealt with them before online. The lady I dealt with was very, very nice. And the third speaker it was her husband. I also bought this $1 packet of Mosquée de Provence pumpkin seeds. I hope I'm saying that right. But uh, it's a weird-looking French pumpkin. When you think pumpkin, this is not what comes to mind. When you look at one of these, you'd know it's a pumpkin. Because it's, well, it's not, it's not that typical jack-o'-lantern shape. It's kind of squat. It's rather lobey. It's kind of a tannish brown. But uh, you cut into it, it's definitely a pumpkin. If you couldn't tell from the outside. My neighbor over here, they had one on their porch this last fall. And I uh, gave them my name and my number and even wrote pumpkin on the little card and said hey at the end of the season when you're done with that thing give me a call I'll come over I'll take it away you don't even have to mess with it and it'll give me a chance to scoop out a bunch of seeds and save them but they had some kind of roof situation in the house that they were renting so they just skedaddled they left their pumpkin on the porch and nobody called me nobody said nothing I didn't even know they were gone, but a couple of weeks ago I drove by and it was saggy and droopy, hanging over the porch. It, it looked like that painting of the Melty Clocks. You know what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll, I'll find a, a picture of it and put it up there. It, it, anyway, the, the pumpkin looked like that. And I got out and scooped some seeds out of it, but I, when I tried to germinate them, I got nothing. So maybe, it, I guess that it was too far gone. And the last table I stopped at was Kim Lund from uh, Michigan somewhere, I believe, is what she said. But uh, her and her husband, Randy, were super nice. They had a little white lima bean on the table. And I said, hey, do you guys have a cooler? Purtier lima bean. And she reached under the table and pulled out two big old plastic tubs and popped the lids off. I mean, we're talking big old plastic tubs like a foot deep. Pulled off the lids and they were just chock full to the brim with bags of seeds and cans of seeds and jars of seeds and packets of seeds. And she said, come on back here and just dig right in there and see what you can find. And I, I jumped at the chance. I've been to rock and mineral shows, and nobody's done that. I've been to 
gun shows, nobody's done that. I've been to other seed shows and nobody did that. I've been to car parts shows, nobody did that. Nobody's ever done that. That I was just flabbergasted, but I jumped at the chance. And down there in that bottom of one of them tubs, I found these Dixie Speckled Butter Peas. And believe it or not, this was what I went to this show hoping to find. It's a little thing. It's the size of a regular bean. Little kind of roundish thing. But it's a lima bean. And they gave them to me from nothing. And I kind of felt bad digging, you know, digging in their stuff and taking up their time and getting, getting them for nothing. So I went to the front of the table and looked around and picked up this packet of tiger melon. She said it's a it's a little stripy thing. It's part of that cucumber cantaloupe family. And lo and behold, she gave me those for free too. And uh, just like Jim, she doesn't have a website, but she is a Seed Savers Exchange member. And if you get on there, you can find her. She's got a thousand different tomatoes at her disposal she could hook you up with and <laughs> clearly she got at least two tubs full of beans and uh and lord knows what else but she was her and her husband both super accommodating super generous super friendly they're good people bless their hearts and uh and that was it we cashed in our little survey cards and beat it and that was my experience at the 5th Annual Central Indiana Seed Swap, put on by Master Gardeners of Hamilton County at the Hamilton County Fairgrounds, Noblesville, Indiana. And if you are free next January 27th, 2024, I recommend you go. It's well worth it, especially if you are interested in something obscure that you can't find like these speckled butter peas. Thanks for watching and have a good day.